So let's say again, the presentation is structured in three areas. First, we'll see where and why uh, we are using LibreOffice Online. Uh, the second one is a more technical section describing the solution, the deployment and monitoring of LibreOffice Online. The second uh, section is, uh, we'll go through a list of contributions that one and one made the open source uh, for LibreOffice project. For first, a couple words uh, about one and one melee media. Uh, one and one melee media offers email cloud and identity services for more than 30 million active users in Europe and North America. Uh, one and one melee media is part of United Internet and it is composed from four brands. GMX, WebD, One and One, and Mailcom. You can find LibreOffice Online in three out of four brands. You can find in uh, WebD, GMX, both international.com and uh, .net, and uh, Mailcom. Current version of LibreOffice Online that you can find in this uh, portal is 6.2, but we are in the middle of upgrading the, the version to 6.3. Uh, now that uh, we know where we can find LibreOffice Online, let's see why. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, one one mail and media offers cloud and uh, email solutions. So most probably we'll have files in the cloud and uh, attachments to the emails. Due to this, we've needed a way to preview the files quickly and to edit them without leaving the portal. So without using an application like Microsoft or having to install LibreOffice uh, on our uh, workstation. Yeah. Uh, the solution created using uh, LibreOffice Online to preview and edit files is called Online Office Editor. This is the landing page of the application, which offers some complementary features, like uh, creating uh, files from predefined templates, previewing your most recently edited files, uh, browsing through your uh, cloud documents in order to open them for edit. And one of the most, uh, the first uh, features from online office editor, uh, upload from local. This feature allows you to select a document from your local workstation, upload to Mail and Media Cloud, and start editing it through LibreOffice Online. So after we select the file, Click open, the file is automatically added to Mail and Media Cloud in a specific directory. And the view of the application of online office application will change and will look like this. As you can see, the file has been added in the left sidebar in the list of open files. Uh, currently, we offer a, a maximum number of five documents for a user to edit at the same time. And in the center, an iframe uh, has been opened, which loaded LibreOffice Online uh, Lodafleet component, which allows us to start editing the file. You can find the same look and feel in both in JMX uh, portal. Here we are editing a spreadsheet file. Or in Melcom. Here uh, we are editing a presentation file. Uh, besides upload, I want to briefly mention one feature. Uh, that allows the customers to create, to quickly create files from uh, predefined templates and start editing them through LibreOffice Online. Uh, what's worth mentioning is that uh, all these predefined templates are in uh, ODF format and currently they are available only for German brands like JMX and WebD. So this is the what I wanted to present for the first section. If we sum summarize, there are two important ideas to remember. First is that you can find LibreOffice Online in GMX, WebD, and Melcom brands. Or you can find the 6.2 version of it. And the second idea is that you can leverage upload from local or templates feature to quickly create files or to upload files to Melee Media Cloud and start editing them through LibreOffice Online. Going on to the more technical part of the presentation, we'll present the system solution of online office editor uh, uh, application while focusing on how we've deployed LibreOffice Online in Kubernetes and also how we can monitor uh, LibreOffice Online instances in Kubernetes using Prometheus and uh, Grafana. Uh, online office editor uh, is composed from high-level modules, as you can see here in this diagram. 
Uh, we have the front-end components, which is uh, the landing page, uh, custom component from uh, online office editor. Uh, as I said earlier, this, uh, this component uh, uh, allows the users to create documents, to, br uh, to quickly browse to the most recently edited files, to browse through cloud documents in order to edit them or to upload uh, uh, new documents uh, in cloud. So offers uh, some features uh, com complementary uh, for those uh, of editing. Uh, when we select a file uh, for edit, uh, Lola Fleet component uh, is open in a separate time frame, which allows us to start uh, editing uh, the file. Uh, these are the front end components. Uh, moving on the back end side, uh, we have a middleware, which uh, uh, acts as a proxy for HTTP and WebSocket uh, requests uh, between the front end clients and the LibreOffice Online components. Uh, it is also responsible for authentication, uh, load balancing, and session management. Uh, we have, the, of course, the LibreOffice Online component that allows us to, to edit files. Uh, and uh, at the last, we have the storage adapter component, which implements the WP REST uh, specifications and facilitates the communication between LibreOffice Online and Cloud. This module allows us to upload the, the files edited from LibreOffice Online to Melee Media Cloud to down, and to download them uh, from uh, Melee Media Cloud in order to be edited. Uh, what's important is that all online office editor modules are uh, deployed uh, in uh, Kubernetes which allows us to scale uh, the modules of the application based on our needs or based on uh, the traffic that uh, our application receives. Uh, let's move forward and see how we can do this, how we can deploy LibreOffice Online in Kubernetes. First of all, Kubernetes is uh, an open source platform for, uh, which manages uh, containerized services. One uh, easy way to deploy a Docker container in Kubernetes is through Helm, which is the package manager for Kubernetes. And Helm uses a packaging form, uh, format called, called charts, the Helm charts. Uh, as you would see in uh, online uh, repo, the Helm chart uh, are a collection of files that uh, logically describes a related set of Kubernetes resources. Uh, LibreOffice Online Helm chart can be found in LibreOffice Online GitHub, online GitHub under Kubernetes Helm. Uh, if we want to, to test this, uh, this Helm chart, we have all the needed information in the, in the readme in uh, online GitHub. And I will iterate quickly uh, on them. Uh, firstly, of course, you need a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, if you want to test this locally, the best, uh, the easy way is to install Minikube. Have all the needed information in this link. Uh, you will need the uh, Helm. Uh, you need to install the Helm. Uh, you will need a version which is newer than 3.0. Optionally, you can. Uh, uh, customize the, the deployment with some environment variables that will be passed to LibreOffice Online. Uh, you can customize these, va these variables in uh, values.yml. And for example, you can cost customize the credentials used by the LibreOffice Online admin console, or you can add the whoopee domain uh, host in this file that will be passed uh, to LibreOffice Online. After that, uh, you can install the, the Helm chart using this command. And the output of the installation will look like this. So firstly, the LibreOffice Online Helm chart will create a deployment called LibreOffice Online. Uh, this deployment will create a replica set. A replica set uh, purpose is to maintain a stable number of Kubernetes pods at any given time. So as you can see here, uh, the replica set from LibreOffice Online Helm chart is supposed to create an three, uh, by default uh, three LibreOffice Online pods and keep these uh, three pods available at any given time. Uh, the list of pods can be seen here. As you can see, the correlation between uh, the replica set and uh, the pods 
uh, is made through the replica set ID. You can see here that uh, the pod name contains the replica set ID. So uh, all three pods were created by this uh, replica set. Uh, besides deployment replica set and pods, uh, ah, uh, one brief mention to say, uh, pod is the smallest abstraction in Kubernetes. Uh, for us, uh, LibreOffice Online pod contains the LibreOffice Online container, which is created uh, using uh, the official uh, uh, Docker file from online GitHub. Besides all, uh, all these resources, we have a service which uh, defines a policy in order to access the, the pods. Uh, I think uh, by default it uses a round robin algorithm in order to to forward, to, to balance the request to, to LibreOffice Online pods. And one important resource that uh, we at uh, one and one Melee Media, we are using it, uh, is the horizontal pod autoscaler, which allows us to, to scale the number of uh, LibreOffice Online instances based on some uh, needs. Uh, the, def the default uh, LibreOffice helm chart uh, scales the number of pods uh, based on CPU and memory utilization. Let's talk about this, uh, this feature in more details and uh, how uh, the horizontal pod autoscaler works in the official hem chart uh, that we've released in uh, online GitHub. Uh, firstly, what's important to say is that Kubernetes uh, cluster comes with a metric server, which is a cluster-wide aggregator for uh, data for resource utilization data, like CPU and memory. And horizontal pod autoscaler will, will check, will, will query this, uh, this metric server to a metrics uh, API for the CPU and memory utilization for a specific set of pods. When it detects that uh, a, uh, a specific threshold is met, a specific threshold that we are setting in the horizontal pod autoscaler, let, like you can see here, the threshold was 70% uh, on memory and CPU. When it detects that this uh, threshold is met, it will instruct the deployment, which uh, it will instruct the replica set to increase the number of pods. Uh, here we can see better the, the example, the, the use case. So in our use case, uh, uh, we set the memory threshold to be 70%. When the horizontal pod 70% from the total uh, amount of memory that we we limit the the pods to to access from our Kubernetes cluster, uh, when it will detect that the threshold uh, has been met, it will uh, in, it will uh, advise the replica set to to increase the number of pods. In our case, from from three to four. Uh, here you can see the event from the horizontal pod autoscaler, uh, the event with the new value of the number of pods, four, and with the reason, memory resource utilization above target. Uh, you can see the, the target and the current uh, memory utilization here in the horizontal pod autoscaler. So the target was 70% and uh, the current memory utilization was 80%. The horizontal pod autoscaler instructed the replica set to, to increase the number of pods. Here you can see that the new number of pods, the new desired number of pods is four. And actually in the list of pods, you can see that a LibreOffice Online, a new LibreOffice Online instance is created. That will help us to, to adjust the traffic, the new traffic that we are receiving. Uh, What's worth mentioning is that the horizontal pod autoscaler, the resource from Kubernetes, could be updated in order to use some specific metrics, metrics that uh, we are interested in. For, so not only CPU and memory. For example, we can tweak the horizontal pod autoscaler to check a custom metric that we expose from LibreOffice Online, custom metric like a number of active documents. So when the total pods uh, reaches a number of current edited documents like 200, it will instruct the horizontal, it will instruct the deployment to create another instance in order to accommodate the new edit request. Uh, 
Uh, this horizontal pod autoscaler, as I've said, is a very important uh, feature from Kubernetes. And uh, we at one and one millimedia we are using it in order to accommodate the, the traffic the, that we receive on a daily basis. Okay, we have uh, a lot of instances in uh, of uh, LibreOffice Online uh, uh, in production. How we can monitor all of them? Because especially when the number of instances could increase dynamically based on the traffic that we receive. The solution uh, for that uh, the solution for monitoring LibreOffice Online instances uh, was created using uh, two uh, tools, open source tools, Prometheus and uh, Grafana. Prometheus is used to, to store uh, metrics and Grafana is used to to visualize these metrics. Uh, like a short introduction to them, uh, Prometheus is a time series database that works, uh, uh, that works by scraping uh, uh, monitoring uh, endpoints, processing them and storing them. And Grafana is a data visualization tool that helps us to build dashboards and uh, graphs for metric data. Uh, what's important is that LibreOffice Online uh, exposes monitoring metrics which are compliant with Prometheus format on REST endpoint lol get metrics. Uh, descri description of these metrics can be found uh, in online uh, GitHub under VSD metrics uh, takes the file. Uh, there are a lot of metrics. Uh, some of them are related to, to the global system, to the global memory available. Some of them are related to the process count, for example, for uh, counting the processes of uh, load VSD of four kit or uh, four kits. And there are some document specific uh, metrics like uh, document upload duration, document download duration, uh, the number of views for a document and so on. You can find all the, the metrics with uh, their description uh, in this uh, file in online GitHub. Uh, based on these metrics, we can define in Grafana dashboards that will look like this. For, so uh, in these three examples, we are counting uh, the number of processes that LibreOffice Online started. Uh, as you can see, we have the LOL VSDM 4 kit, which should have one process at any given time. Uh, then we have the, the kits. Uh, from this dashboard, we can see, we can deduce the number of edited documents, for example. Uh, and uh, yeah, we can construct uh, a lot of dashboards. Grafana offers uh, us a lot of uh, features in, or, in order to construct the dashboards. Uh, it only depends on what metrics we are returning from the uh, get metrics rest endpoint. Also, we can define alerts in Grafana that will alert us, uh, I don't know, when there are two LOL VSD process instances on the container or something like that. Uh, if we sum up this, uh, this section, there are three important details uh, to remember is that you can uh, deploy LibreOffice Online in Kubernetes using uh, the official LibreOffice Online Helm chart that you'll find in online uh, repo. You can leverage the horizontal pod autoscaler to scale the number of LibreOffice instances based on your needs. As I said, CPU, memory, or a uh, number of active documents. <coughs> and you can monitor all these uh, LibreOffice online instances uh, deployed in uh, Kubernetes uh, using Prometheus, Grafana, and the REST endpoint that returns the metrics uh, in uh, Prometheus format. Uh, reaching uh, the end of the presentation, I want to iterate a little bit through the contribution that one and one made in the past year. Uh, what's next, the, our future contributions that we want to open source? So one and one millimedia started to, to contribute to LibreOffice uh, online project in February last, uh, last uh, year. Uh, our first important uh, contribution was related to WebSocket defragmentation on how we can manage uh, defragmented uh, fragmented WebSocket messages. 
Uh, we've uh, open sourced some uh, cross-site scripting fixes on Lollaflit uh, component. Uh, also, we've done some library updates on Lollaflit. Um, we've discovered and reported a CVE related to LibreLogo. After after uh, the uh, LibreOffice online conference from this year, we've open sourced uh, an improvement in. Uh, to support uh, TLS for communication with, uh, with storage. We've open sourced the REST endpoint for admin metrics, uh, which uh, uh, allows us to, to, mo to monitor the LibreOffice online uh, instances with Prometheus. And we've open sourced the Helm chart uh, for deploying uh, LibreOffice online uh, application in Kubernetes. Uh, what's uh, next on short-term goals we want to uh, open source uh, segmentation for uh, uh, monitoring Hasmont uh, with a new metric uh, for segmentation fault uh, crashes uh, count uh, that will allow us to, to monitor the crashes uh, inside the LibreOffice Online. Uh, also, this will impose a change in the communication between LoLBSD and ForKit through Unisocket. And also, we want to open source uh, CDN integration in order to allow the plugin of a CDN, a content delivery network, for serving uh, Lola Fleet stat uh, static uh, files. Uh, all in all, Online Office Editor will not be made possible without the full contribution from open source community. So saying that, I want to really uh, say a big thanks to LibreOffice community and to all the patches that you, you contribute. Uh, Saying that, I want to thank you for listening, and I'm open for questions if you have. Yeah. If not, thank you very much. Oh. Sorry. Do you think that you are the biggest deployment of the office online? Because In I've never heard somebody doing it with Kubernetes before, so you must have lots of documents. Uh, I don't know if we are the biggest, but uh, in terms of deploying LibreOffice Online to Kubernetes, yeah, I, I think we are the first. I don't know who is uh, deploying. So how, how many documents are being added in the system at once? Uh, it, depends, uh, it depends on the portal. It depends on the number uh, of, uh, on the day. But uh, we think that uh, based on our monitoring, we are uh, having 10, 15,000 uh, users, active users uh, on a daily basis, and we can reach to 400 uh, documents edited at the same time using uh, LibreOffice Online. 400? 400, yeah. But uh, as I say, it depends on the daily, on the portal, uh, WebD and JMix uh, are uh, portals with uh, a large number of uh, active users. So on these portals, yeah, we are ha in having an increased number of uh, documents being edited on a daily basis. Cool. Any more questions? No? Thank you very much.